here is where the drama starts. Lap 30, eight laps to go. Sam Doby hoping to take advantage of these lapped cars. Poeski goes dives on the right side. Very aggressive here. This is lap four. The two Viceroys, Bill Frazier ahead of Matt Poeski. Frazier's off. Frazier hit the grass. You hit that tire wall, your day is done. You know, it's lap 20. The Williams still trying to get around the Terrell team as he'll go around the left car and around those at the same time. <laughs> at the same time, he's got the inside corner of Willie Rod Kirby. Yes, he will. He will get him on the inside. Good Maria leading us all into Moss's corner. Look at the beauty as uh, his right side will cook the grass of the 180. No, a 360. Oh. Who will yield going into this corner? It's really not meant for too wide as it will be Gernot. Gernot will yield. Lots of smoke picking up from that Williams car. He is pushing it to the absolute limit. 26 of 30 now, only four laps to go. He's gonna get the run coming out the final corner. He's gonna pull up side by side with the leader. It's gonna be a drag race for the finish. Who is going to get there first? It's going to be. Racing the Lotus 79 at Classic Circuits offers the drivers in this series a thrill like any unlike any other. But arriving at Monza can bring a tinge of melancholy, for this was the track in which the incredibly talented Ronnie Peterson lost his life in this car. Respects will be paid, but in the end, we are here for one thing, to race. Today, we'll decide the championship as we get ready to watch round 12 of the Lotus 79 Classic Teams Championship. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Hi, I'm Joe Peak, and with me in the booth is Ossian Puhaka. Behind the scenes is our director, the Dr. Amjad Yaman, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Ossian, Monza offers one of the more unique layouts in the world of F1. Back in 1978, and even still today, it seems to retain its reputation of being wickedly fast. Yeah, I mean, 1961, Wolfgang von Trips, 1970, Johan Rind, 1978, Ronnie Peterson. Incredible amount of tragedy here. It's usually, classically, has been the season finally, and it's an incredibly fast circuit. It's incredibly treacherous, and it offers a unique challenge to the drivers in the form of having to set up this car to go so fast in here, and having to go against the nature of a grand car in order to go fast. And of course, we, as always, have our lap guide to show you what it's like from on board the Lotus 79 here around Monza. All right, we've got Amjad Yaman in the GSRC Lotus 79, so let's do a lap around Monza. Blasting down the front straightaway, draft battles will be plentiful. There's no first chicane in this layout, so drivers will be flat to the floor for a long, long time. In fact, once they hit Curva Granda, they still won't lift because the downforce of the Lotus makes it a breeze to power through. As you come out of it, drift back to the right and set up to break for Della Rosia. This will effectively become the first real corner and this chicane could cause some pileups with how tight and slow it is. Stay off the tall sausage curbs because the car won't like them. From there, it's a short burst to the first Lesmo where ideally you want to take it with a late apex. The slight bit of camber can deceive you into turning in too early. You can use the AstroTurf on exit, but get back to the asphalt and then line up for the second Lesmo. This is the more critical of the two turns because the exit leads onto a very long straightaway with heavy braking at the end of it. Passing opportunities will be rife and a lot of drivers will be trying to take advantage of anyone lacking a good launch. As we come under the bridge, hold to the right and spot your brake marker for Ascari. This chicane is very different from the other one with three apexes and a lot faster line. Try to open up the final apex for the best run you can get down into Parabolica. The pavement to the right is all fair game, so drivers are likely to let it swing wide to help carry their speed. Finally, as we approach the final corner, you can attempt to pass here, but I'm not sure that it's always wise in most cases. Parabolica gives a nice big braking zone and the track is plenty wide, so that's not the issue here. It's because when you come out of the turn, you're back on the main street where anyone within a stone's throw will suck up to the rear of you and overtake you again. It might be better to wait until here to slipstream by your opponent, but hopefully you keep it all together and have now finished a lap around Monza. There you see what it's like from on board the car here at Monza, but we've got a championship on the line. So let's quickly jump over to the driver's standings here as it's going to be decided today. You can see there are seven points between Wood and Aloma, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Aloma has been a lot quicker than Wood at most tracks so far this season. 
But just to complicate things, Matt has 36 drop points in his pocket. So no matter what, he will score 36 points. Aloma does still need a good finish, and he needs to at least outscore him by those seven points, uh, plus the 36 that Matt will score. It is doable, but uh, there's a lot of scenarios that could play out. We'll try to keep you abreast of things as things go on in the race. Austin, what about the team's championship? Looks like uh, it's still relatively close up at the top of that as well. Yes, we got Paramount Racing Team at 305 with Steve B. Bycroft and uh, Mr. Taylor t driving for that team. We got Equip Race Renault Elf in the second place, Equip Talbot Chidanes in third place, then we got uh, Williams and Ferrari rounding out the top five. So we got 25 points between the first two teams and it's very close for the fourth place as well. And I know a lot of these duos, a lot of these drivers will be absolutely thirsting to gain those positions here at the final race because it's a big bragging point for this driver's show. It's a big thing of honor. I can imagine, especially with uh, how tightly knit this community is. Let's take a look at what the race itself involves. So as we mentioned, it is the finale and there's 27 laps that they will be running at this track. The cars are open setup. We'll talk about that a lot. Austin has a lot of insight into how these uh, cars can be tweaked to try and find an advantage here. And they also have an incident limit. Now, uh, we're not sure that that will uh, come into play here today, but there are a lot of chicanes, and chicanes usually in iRacing mean off tracks are very easy, so we could see a few drivers disappear by the end of this thing. As a reminder, we have a new merchandise store here on the Global Sim Racing channel. Make sure and check that out. We've got a link in the description below. And we're selling beanies there. Now, we uh, figure that there are a few people that maybe use these beanies like uh, they were made famous in the movie Rocky. So we made sure that they imbued people with the power to punch as hard as Rocky if you wear this GSRC beanie. So go get that one. Make sure you can protect yourself out on the docks. It's right now. Rude. <laughs> right now, I'm on the qualifying. Uh, Steve Bycroft currently holds the provisional pole. I see the Italian Nicola Cochi is currently doing well for his home country here at Monza as uh, he is up in second ahead of Aloma. Doesn't look like Wood has got a lap time in yet. You were talking a lot about what you can do for this car to find speed in the race, Austin. Do you tend to try and set up something unique here in qualifying as well here at Monza? Absolutely. You use a different gearing in qualifying because you don't have the draft that you will ha have in the race and the draft can really be a game changer here. I'm talking about 10, maybe 10 miles an hour more at the end of that long front straight. You will also have a different ride height, uh, di different things all around to the car. You don't have to compensate to the dirty air that there will be a lot. Now, another interesting point I would talk about, Joe, I was watching Jamie Hall go by that into Curva Grande just a moment ago and I'm watching Alexi Eloma as well. Now there is a speed trap as Eloma makes a mistake in Ascari Chicane. Eloma is 10 kilometers an hour slower than Jamie Hall and slower than a lot of other people. He is stopping out at 293. Well, and he's stopping on track as well. So with that mistake, he's not going to get his second lap. And he is well down the order as Wood, you saw on screen, took the provisional pole away. Nuno Marrero was briefly in second before Nicola Cochi took it right back. Bycroft winds up in fourth on his second lap. Gernot Frisha, who could have been in the championship hunt but just ran out of races as he missed the first four, but certainly climbed up the order with a string of wins later on in the season. He sits down in fifth currently, and he's got a 30.9 under his belt as we watch Mikus come across the line. Well down the order for him, considering his speed. A 30.5 is going to promote him up to six. That looks a little bit more representative for Peter. Yes, Matt Wood coming over the line in his second lap. 130.0, so he improves by a couple of hundreds of a second, but I don't think that second lap was so good for him because usually you gain a lot more time in the second lap. I'm talking about three, four tenths, maybe even half a second as the tires are getting hot and you get the pressures up and Cherno coming over the line as well. Interested to see what he does, goes into P number three. So Cho, right at the front, it seems like Matt Wood has done all he needs to do in order to bring himself a little bit closer to that coveted championship trophy. 
That'll be his first one. If he does win the championship today here in the classic teams championship, looks like Jamie Hall is going to abandon his second lap. See Adam Frazier is done as West got both of his in. I think he's the last one. Barry West down in 18th. Only one driver is not set a time. Uwe Trangrade uh, currently last of the 20 cars. Marrera got himself onto the front row, uh, beating out Frisha on his second lap. I think, yeah, coming up to a scar, it looks like Barry West should have enough time here. Yeah, he should. And he is still on the second lap. Now he is 1.8 seconds behind the lead currently held by Matt Wood. Oh, going very sideways at the end of Ascari, and that is something you will see on the race also. These cars will be very difficult to handle. I can't even begin to describe what a Lotus 79 like to handle with low downforce. And you have to race the car too. You have to race it a lot higher in order to get that top speed to not scrub the bottom of the car in any part of the track. It's all about top speed here. Here comes Barry West. Let's see if he has what it takes. 131.2, not a bad lap. Gains himself uh, over half a second and a position as well. It's going to bump to 17th, but that's going to end our qualifying. Let's go through your starting order. 10 at a time, as we always do. It's going to be Matt Wood on the pole with Nuno Marrera starting in second today. Gerna Frisha is in third, followed by our first Italian here in the field. Fourth place to Nicola Cochi. Steve Bycroft, who unfortunately fell out of the running for the championship, will start in fifth with Peter Mikus in sixth position. Rob Olenek starts P7. Alexia Lomo all the way down in eighth. He's got a lot of work to do to take this championship. Kendrick Taylor will be starting in ninth. And Kane Lasky rounds out your top 10. And in the 11th place, on row number six, it is Philip Lake, Tommy Unhola in 12th place, Teemu Vaskilampi in 13th, and then it's Peter Konechny, Jamie Hall, and Adam Frazier. Now in 17th place, number 17, Barry West, Pablo Suarez in 18th, Ben Lafter 19th, and Uwe Trengerein rounds out your 20 driver field. Feels good to have a actual Finn who can say the Finnish names better than we ever could <laughs> in the booth for once as we wait for the rest of the cars to now grid up for the finale. What a setup we've got here with Wood on the pole and his rival who has been so much faster, Meyer down in the mid pack. Can he climb his way through? Can he use the train of cars, the chain of the draft to try and get his way forward? and potentially snag the championship away here in the final round. He's missed a lot of rounds. In fact, the last three, Aloma has not been here. The fact that he has returned is a good sign for a great battle today. Just waiting for Frisha and Unhola to find their way out to the grid. Then we'll get going for 27 laps here at Monza. I see we've got Frisha down. Unhola, the last of our drivers now to work his way out there. Not sure if he's planning on trying to do a pit start. No, he is not. He is out on the grid. So the engines now start to rev as the lights come up. Green flag is out off the line. Who's got a good start? Currently looks like Matt Wood Peter is Mikos. decent. He, indeed, it's three wide back there for fourth place. Bycroft with Kochi next to him and Olenek looking up the outside. No first chicane here. They're going to come through Curva Granda. The first braking zone will be down into Della Rosia. Most of them starting to get single file up at the front, but we could see some deep dives down into this first chicane. Looks like we got a bit of a battle back in fifth. Rob Olenek to the... Oh, Eloma! Eloma has gotten a car right into his back. Sorry about your eardrums there. He got a contact right into the back of him. Kane Lasky hitting him on the second chicane. He hit the car in front as well. He keeps going, but he has severe damage on the Lotus 79. Oof, and there's no spare cars in this series. He's back in 10th now, so he's lost positions from where he started with that incident. Hopefully the damage isn't too bad and he's able to keep going. And hopefully he hasn't lost too much pace. Up at the front, it is still Wood leading. Marrera is in second, giving chase. Gernot Frisha hot on his heels. And Steve Bycroft rounding out the top four before we get a break in the field. Indeed, and going out in the back straight towards Parabolica. I'm looking at this string of cars. Nicola Kochi really close to P number three right now. Challenging Rob and getting through. That was they a come. really neat pass from Nicola Kochi, using that draft to his advantage. And look at how wide these cars are going, Joe. 
you see this a lot on the opening laps. Watch this draft string of cars going into Curva Grande. You will see them running very wide. Some of them having to lift a little, some of them having to lift a lot. You could see a lot of cars in that gravel trap. Morera is going to go for the inside, though, looking for the lead as they go side by side through this fast right-hander. Wood almost drifting out into the gravel himself, but he holds on around the outside, tries to outbreak him down into Della Rosa. Oh, he outbreaks himself! Bounds over the curbs. Wood gives away the lead, gives away second place. Morera goes by. Frisha goes by. Wood down to third. How much damage does he also have on the underside? Uh, he should have a little bit of damage on the underside of the car. He will lose about half a second per lap, maybe more, uh, running over those curves really hard. Now, what happened here is that he actually managed to lock up the rear transaxle. It bounced a little bit, the rear bounced a little bit under braking. He hit a bump on the inside that we know is there and just running wide, couldn't turn the car into the corner. Now under challenge from Steve Bycroft. So, the blessing for him is that Alex Yeloma is all the way down to P number 9, but he is right now making moves, and even though he is lacking in top speed, you can see it clearly. Look at how much Philip Lake is gaining, even though he is getting the draft. But Alex Yeloma will have a lot of ground to make up. But Matt Wood will surely be shaken up by that mistake, and in the mid-pack you could make up positions really quickly. So this is going to be a very interesting 20, 25 laps still to go. Podium is about to change hands as we watch on screen because Wood does seem to be lacking top speed. Bycroft easily goes by. He had a look in a parabolica. That didn't work out. Down the front stretch offers an easier pass. And he is clearly into third. Meanwhile, Oloma actually fell to 10th because of his lack of top speed down the front stretch. Even though he was attacking Lake before, he is going to have to find a buddy here, it looks like, Austin, if he wants to make any inroads. Either a body or some clean track in front of him. He is suffering from an issue where he lacks top speed. And look at how fast he is on these corners. Going into Lesmo number one, making a pass from Peter Mikus. Going into Lesmo number two, trying to get Philip Lake. Let's see if Philip defends down the inside. No, and Eloma will not go for it. That's a very difficult move to make. But again, in the mid corner, he's rotating that car using the throttle and using a little bit of a brake lift. That is a very finished technique that these drivers use, and as a result, he is able to get the car around. So I'm thinking Eloma has a lot more damage than he his pace currently is showing, and he's really struggling out there. So right now, hitting the bump, Philip Lake and Eloma gets to the inside. Let's see if he can make a move happen to Parabolica. You can see he got the run out of the corner and down the straight towards Parabolica. He just falls away from Lake. It's going to be even worse on the longest stretch of the track here along the pit straight. Meanwhile, Nikola Kochi's already gotten by Matt Wood. I almost think that Matt oh. Wood will fall back to a Loma before we know it. Yeah, and Matt Wood makes another mistake, exiting Parabolica. He just ran a little bit wide, got on the AstroTurf, and then hit the bump that is there on the AstroTurf. So he has dropped down to P number six right now. That's only about four positions away from a Loma, who does lose out to Mikus yet again on the front stretch. He gains a spot. Whoa! Whoa, Lasky, absolutely oh, no. flying through the air. More cars join him. Barry West and Temu Vaskilampi as well involved in that one. So that's a biggie and that's, as you see a replay happening, that's a two-car collision and, well, a difficult scenario. I'm, I'm saying that, you know, uh, Kane Lasky maybe didn't want to yield to Barry West, who was on the inside. Barry West was alongside, there was a little bit of net code contact, and Kane Lasky went flying into that wall, and Teemu Vaskilampi, just a passenger there, but I'm thinking Kane Lasky maybe should have given a little bit more room. He saw a car on the inside, and it's an absolute suicide to turn in on someone who has a run on you at Curva Grande, because that car will understeer so much on the inside anyway, so... You know, that's one of those things, you want to race hard, you take the risk, that's fine, but these things will happen if you don't know when to yield. Anybody ever wondered why we have to have a chicane before a Curva Granda? That's a very graphic example. Oh. Gernot Frisha, meanwhile, in second, still chasing down Morera. He's about six tenths behind. Is that close enough to stay within the draft here, Ossian, or is he starting to lose yes. it? Yes, yeah, six tenths of a second is usually the threshold for the draft as we uh, Peter Mikus is also making a move on Philip Lake and Eloma is right behind them. At Monza, you are running so low down for us that you can get the draft even from a second away, but you get most of the draft about uh, five to six tenths away. Six tenths is always what I looked at. 
in terms of a gap when I know I will have the draft. And it's a massive draft. Let's see, Mikus and Lake going to favor Lake, who's got the inside down into De La Rosa. So that moves him into eighth position. And it looks like, if you can see, that is the yellow reno of Matt Wood that is just ahead of them. He is indeed being caught by Alomo. We will have a championship battle as Alexi Ooh. gets the inside down into the second Lesmo with a brave move. But we're going to have a battle in the mid-pack instead of up at the front. Now, there are serious championship implications about their position, though. Because Joe, as we know, points are calculated via the iRacing point system, which is based on the strength of field. Now, uh, the variation between positions... Oh, and makes a mistake, does uh, Philip Lake getting a little bit too wide? Uh, actually, not getting even too wide. He was just too eager on the throttle and making a mistake. So Elma gains another position. Anyway, uh, in the mid-pack, the difference, points difference between positions is not as big as right at the front. So I'm thinking if they are going to battle for P number six or P number seven, Eloma will need to put a car between himself and Matt Wood in order to clinch the championship. And they, though they do use the official uh, ones for the classic teams championship, uh, of course, they now use fixed points here in the uh, race as we watch for the battle for the lead. For the Sunday series, Nuno Moreira is still ahead of Frisia, but for the Sunday series, fixed points, it is uh, 56 points for a win, and then they get two bonus points, one for pull, which Wood has already claimed, and then one for fast to slap, which I need to check to see who's got that right now. It uh, doesn't matter who has it right now, because <laughs> it will be a clinch on those final three laps anyway, these guys. Uh, it's a tradition at Load 79 to try and go for the fastest lap, even if you lead on the last lap around. Now, Cherno versus Nuno. Those are two guys who are both very good at Monza. Very different setup philosophy between these two drivers. Cherno preferring a loose rear end, or rather a really open differential on his car, and a really calm handling. Nuno is kind of like I was when I was active, prefers a really reactive, stiff front end on that car. So two different philosophies, and you will see how differently they take each and every corner. So it will be interesting to see which one is the winning one out here today. As we stay on this battle, let's stick with this. We're riding on board with Frisia right now. Uh, bad news for Alexi Aloma. I checked on how many points they will earn as we got a good run here from Gernot up on Morera. Can he get it done? He's got to the inside but he's still not fully passed as they come up to Curva Granda. He's got the inside of this fast sweeping right-hander, and he doesn't need the inside for Della Rosa, it looks like, because he is well ahead by the time they hit the braking. Uh, but to finish my point, it is only 30 points for seventh place, and with where they are right now, that means that Wood still gets his drop points, Ossian. So unless... Uh, unless we see Alexi start to move up in positions, he still won't be able uh, to overtake him in points. Yeah, and that's the big thing. Now, Matt Wood is under pressure from Alexi Eloma. We see championship implications here, but Alexi has to get a move on. Now, the thing is, they got Kendrick Taylor ahead of him, and then it's a whole lot of empty to Robin Nicola. So, you know, those two guys. He will need to catch them up, but he will need to get past Matt, Matt Wood first. And you don't make a move into Ascari, Alexi. Wow, that was brave. And Matt Wood really not wanting to end his race there. And Alexi going very wide on the exit as well. Tell you what, damage as you will, but Alexi is really charging. And the last time I, I saw him charging like that is when he won the Finnish Championship in 2016. So usually it leads to good things. Yeah, Lexi clearly understands it's the last race. You know, you got to take the risks when they're there. He's already caught up to Kendrick Taylor, so he could get himself up to P5. Now I got to go and check my chart to see what P5 is worth. Ah, it's only 32 points still, so that's still not enough because, again, for those just joining us, Wood has 36 drop points that he will earn no matter where he finishes today. And another um, change up at the front. Marrera in front of Frisia. Yeah, and Steve Bycroft now joining into that battle as well. So Steve Bycroft, who was in very good pace early on in the season, has returned back to the forest. He's to keep swapping positions. Nuno Moreira right now in the lead. Cherno Frisch in the second place. And Steve Bycroft looking to join the battle as well. 
Now, this could be a blessing for Alexi Eloma if these guys keep battling. But his problem is that the guys at the lead pack, Chernoff Ridge, Frisch last time around 130.8, you're looking at 131 flats, and then you look at Eloma. Okay, he had to make an overtake, but even in the draft, 131.0. So he is not catching up, he's running the same pace, and he will not make up an 8 second difference running that same pace. But let's see what happens when he catches up to Kendrick Taylor. And though we've seen Frisha and Morera win a couple times so far this season, Bycroft, amazingly, has yet to take a victory. He missed a lot of open goals uh, uh, when we were missing Aloma and uh, certainly could have taken a win in the last four rounds, but unfortunately was not able to capitalize. Now, maybe here today, when it's too late, he could take one as Gernot is uh, closing in on the back of Morera once again, and we're going to swap around one more time. This going back and forth doesn't look like it's losing them too much, Ossian, but I think it looks like Steve's got the draft well enough that he will be on top of those gearboxes. Yeah, as long as you go back and forth on a straight line, you will not lose much ground. But as, lo as soon as you start to go side by side through the corners, as soon as you start battling for the position, then yeah, you will not lose time. Now, Cherno is a wily old fox. And uh, oh, Elma making a move on the Kendrick Taylor, P number six. Yeah, he's got to the inside into the first Lesmo, and that's going to move him into six. But is that as high as he is able to climb? Three seconds to catch up to Rob Oldenick, who, as you mentioned, running similar pace. So that's going to be difficult for him to close that down and too far back from the draft. We saw on screen as we were heading into Del Rosia, both Marrera and Frisia had quite a moment into that chicane. And that's allowed Bycroft to now get within four to five tenths of those two. Let's see if he'll, he'll be able to reel them in onto the front stretch now as they get ready to break for the Parabolica. We're only on lap nine, so it's still very early days in this round. It is, it is. And as I was saying earlier before Alexi made the move, you have Cherno, the wily old fox here in the lead. He knows the situation. He knows that there is Steve also in P number three. And you have to think at this point not to let anyone else into the battle. So make sure the lead battle is only between him and Nuno and try to run away from Nuno, or if Nuno is close enough, make the overtake easy for him so you benefit from the draft of each other. You can use that really well to run away from the pack here at Monza. You do not want a huge pack because that is always another variable, another thing you cannot control. And if you lose the battle, you will end up in P number three, not P number two. But I think Cherno just wants to win, win this place. Nuno Morela, we know he's a fighter, but he's also a very intelligent driver. So he will be thinking the same thing Cherno will be thinking, which is get away from Steve Bycroft as fast as possible. And Steve Bycroft right now is just trying to catch them up because he knows that once he gets within the six tenths of a second, he will have a lot easier time to catch up to the leading duo. And the leading duo will finally have to accept that, okay, Steve is there, it's a three-way battle now. But right now, these two at the front are still trying to prevent Steve Bycroft from making it that way. And you mentioned how clever that uh, Frisia can be at times. The way that he's talked about not liking these draft tracks, I have a feeling that's exactly what he's thinking right now, is trying to figure out how he can get himself and Nuno away from Steve as they come around off of the final corner to complete yet another lap. These three have gapped uh, Nikola Kochi by about three seconds. Uh, he's still got Olenek back with him. You can see them there in the background in fourth and fifth position. I'm sure Nicola would like to get up on the podium. Up at the front, a little bit of a gain from Morera, but not enough of one to be able to attack Gernot down into the Curva Grana this time. They all stay in line as they break for Della Rosia. Looking through the field to see what other sort of battles we've got going. Interesting to note that Matt Wood is probably grateful for those pocket points because he's continued to fall backwards. He's now down to 10th. So despite him just bounding over the, the sleeping policeman, he seems to have gotten a lot more damage than Alexi Aloma did with contact from another car, which is kind of bizarre. Yeah, but then again, a car gives way and it's always a bit... Uh curious as to what you hit because I don't think Eloma got floor damage. Now floor damage is a real killer here in terms of top, top speed and also Eloma didn't set up his car for top speed anyway so 
maybe he has lost a little bit less in terms of the overall performance, even though he may have bigger damage. Now, another point of curiosity. Alexi Aloma's top speed going into Curva Grande 291 with his car on the current conditions. The top speed of, for example, bring an example, Cherno Frisch, let's see. He was doing around 305 last time I checked, going into the first corner. And that is a lot, that is like 10 miles an hour. And again, he is doing well over 300 already before the uh, modern first chicane and doing it 304 again. Wow. Without draft, that is. Neither of them has draft. <laughs> Oh, but I think Nuno Marrero's got a nice little draft, and he's going to look to the inside down into De La Rosa, manages to outbreak him. This is going to slow them down quite a bit, and Steve Bycroft is loving that, as now he is right underneath the rear wing of the DH driver coming into the first Lesmo. Will he try and attack, or will he wait behind? I'm curious what's happening in the mind of the Hoosier. Oh, that is a curious one. If I was him right now, I would be biding my time. I would let those two guys battle, see what happens, and also try to determine their strengths and weaknesses. He is right now in what we call a popcorn position. He, he can just eat that popcorn and watch the two battle, watch some of the two greatest drivers this series has ever seen. Cherno, undoubtedly the GOAT, greatest of all time in this series. Nuno Moreira, plenty of accolades for him as well. Great to see him back actively in this series and a wonderful driver. Now, he will have to bide his time, see what Cherno does behind Nuno, how aggressively Cherno wants to actually attack Nuno or will uh, Cherno just bide his time as well. And then Steve will have to determine where do I make my move. But if I was Steve, I was hoping the two go side by side through a corner at least once and then make my move on the exit three wide and just absolutely go for it. You know, on the straight, pass them both and then just look to the sunset and hope they are not too angry. <laughs> right now, he didn't get a good enough run to do that down into the curve of Granda. I wonder if we could pull up a lap comparison between uh, Loma and Olenek who he's been chasing. It looks like Aloma may have lost a lot of time since I looked just a moment ago as well. And there we got the difference between them. It looks like Olenek repeatedly quicker than Alexi as he's strengthened that gap to about 4.4 seconds between them now. There you see Rob uh, continuing to try to hold on to Nikola Kochi there in that, uh, uh, that uh, Legier up ahead of him. And it'll be a while, yeah. He is getting the draft, is Rob, and Alex is getting zero draft at all. Now, Alex needs that draft in order to stay competitive here. He is running away from Kendrick, Philip Lake, and those guys, sure, but he will need someone to help him in order to catch up with those guys. Now, Nicola Kochi, let's talk about his pace for a moment. He has steadily improved over the last couple of years. I've been following his career. He was uh, beginning to make waves when I was still active, and last time by 130.8 in clear air let's see his lap time this time by 130.9 for comparison nuno moreira last time 130.7 steve bycroft in a two-car draft 130.8 nicola on his home turf is possibly if they start battling up in the lead a shoe in for the podium and we got a problem with jamie hall out of the parabolica looks like he's found the barrier even Yep. Trying to figure out what happened. We got the replay here. Ooh, that's a tank slapper that wound up actually slapping the barrier. And no. unfortunately, that was a hard contact. Jamie, you don't do that with a low to 79 and low down force. You just don't do that. What he tried to do is just apply opposite lock and correct the slide. Now, a good idea in theory, but that will happen if you do it wrong, if you do it a little bit too slowly, because the front tires will catch grip once again, and then you're heading right into, well, pretty much not in here, just without a closet. So what you have to do there is feather the throttle a little bit, try to control the slide, or go for a two-foot matching set. Go on. And, and, and Phil Lake just blew his engine. We saw the replay on screen. Looks like downshifting into the Della Rosa chicane. He, well, that's both dirty torque drivers. You can see, unfortunately, having a premature end of this race. So that is a miserable way to end the season. And speaking of miserable ends, we've uh, unfortunately had an early exit 
for Tommy Linholo as well, who's found his way up to the booth and is uh, ready to talk to us about uh, what happened there at the start. Tommy, I know you've had some some woes with the starts of these Lotus 79 races. What happened to you out there? Tommy, do you have a copy? Well, we thought that we had uh, Tommy ready to talk, but uh, looks like his mic is not quite ready to go. So we'll see if he wants to talk a little bit later. But uh, uh, unfortunately, he has been taken out of this race on the very first lap. In fact, we've lost him, Trangrade, Vascalampi, Lasky, Hall, and Lake. We're down to 14 out of our 20 drivers left. Yeah, and Tommy, I think Tommy was just wanted to talk to us after the race, or maybe he just wanted to say hi to me, who knows. But anyway, <laughs> Tommy, a, he's a really stand-up guy, by the way. He's a really, really cool guy, you know. He practices really hard. He may not be the most talented of drivers when it comes to raw, pure talent, but he makes up for it with absolute determination. Earned a spot in the World Cup of Fire Racing 2018 thanks to practicing about 1,000 laps for the event and just being constantly present and making sure he is available and helped us really to win that trophy and earn himself a lot of respect that year. So he's a really, really nice guy and it's sad to see him go so early in the race. Yeah, and uh, in the forums, much uh, like many Finns, it seems like he's not afraid to speak his mind. So I feel like we need more uh, dri uh, Finnish drivers to give a go at NASCAR like we saw with Kimi Raikkonen because I can't imagine how that would go with them just uh, saying how they feel <laughs> and some things being said that certainly would provide some entertainment as we continue to watch the battle for the lead here up at the front in the final round of the Lotus 79 Sunday Grand Prix Series. Oh, I know. It's the same for everyone. <laughs> So, uh, Bycroft catching up right now to the leading duos, ever still, and it seems like a calm before a storm. Now, you see that very often, but here, lap number 16, these cars will leave all throughout the race. The car will change, the handling will change. Cherno right now maybe smelling blood in the water, but I don't think he will go for it here, no. You know, making a little bit of a move, and that's what makes racing against Cherno so very difficult. He never makes mistakes, or if he does, well, you may as well put up a lottery ticket, because that's so rare. And he is so, you know, you can trust him side by side. He will not run into you, he will not crash you out, he will not do you dirty, but he is absolutely unpredictable in terms of when he will attack, he will keep you on your toes. When he is front of you, he places his car on just the right positions, he will not try to defend a corner for nothing, he will not ruin his exit for the entry. And when he's behind you, you are constantly, absolutely sweating bullets. And you can see Nuno starting to get a little nervous as Cherno is coming closer and closer. Here we go! It's down to the inside, coming up to the curve of Granda. Nuno does not defend into this corner. And in fact, he's going to lift a little bit. Looks like he lets him through. So he falls back to second. Here comes Bycroft with a huge run. He also decides not to fight it, though. He'll stay back in third. All of them through Del Arosia, nice and safe. And uh, Gruna Frisha back up to the lead once again. Might sound a little laissez-faire from us, but as was mentioned, this is a strategy race at this point with a lot of laps left to go. Yeah, and I can tell you, neither Ch uh, Cherno or Nuno are enjoying this lowdown for track out there. It's uh, really... These top drivers are not enjoying lowdown for tracks precisely because it brings so much variation. And what you want as a top driver when you are at top of the skill pyramid, then variation is the last thing you want. What you want is predictability. And you can't predict the race at Monza. You just cannot do that. But the good thing is that we seem to have a straight battle. We seem to have a good battle. And we have a battle between drivers who know how to battle. So for us viewers, from here at the commentary booth, I know as a driver I will be sweating bullets there. As a commentator, I'm enjoying this. Go at it, boys. <laughs> Let's see who wins. Absolutely. I'm kind of the same. Like seeing there's tracks I love to drive and there's tracks I love to commentate on and they're not always the same thing as they come down the front stretch a little bit. A, a little bit. I think we had a problem with Adam Frazier. We might have a replay for that in a moment. But up at the front, Nuno is going to take it right back. Just a reverse move of what we saw last lap through. So Nuno Marrera, now your leader. Let's take a glance at Adam Frazier. It was coming out of... Uh, the second Lesmo, I think he just went wide here. Not sure if the car snapped. 
Oh, and he had two problems. He also had an issue here in Della Rosa, it looks like. So this has been a horrible lap for the Virginia's driver. Yep, and what happened there is that, as you can see, him sliding wide on the screen. He, the same thing happened to him as happened to Matt Wood. The rear started bouncing around under braking, and once that happens, once you get the rear locked up, maybe you downshift too early, maybe you have the brake balance set a little bit too far to the rear, either way, you can't get the grip, you slide wide, you slide over to a sleeping policeman, that will ruin the underside of his car, and then he will also cook his tires, and he spent the rest of the lap worrying about that, and right now, Adam Frazier will be frustrated with himself, and will be angry, and will be also be very busy behind the wheel of the Lotus 79 trying to find out just how much damage do I have, what can I do with this car from here on out, and still, because he's a racing driver, how can I catch Pablo ahead of me? Well, uh, Pablo managed to get that spot from Adam with those two mistakes, and actually that makes him our hard charger currently. He started 18th, and he's up to 10th. Also, what's interesting about Suarez, he's got the number 20, and that's decided by iRating for those not familiar with iRacing, which means his classification is basically, uh, he's judged as the least skilled, if you will. Uh, but uh, he's proving that wrong, and he's gonna get some of that iRating as that car is uh, well up in the mid-pack currently. Yeah, and as we see, uh, Barry West also, Barry West has big, big trouble, by the way. He's very damaged in the Della Rocia, and he just let the leaders through. Now, that is nothing new, but it's interesting to see when we talk about tire rating, Barry West still out there with that bent up rear wing, with that bent up car. And he's doing that because he wants to minimize his losses right now. He knows Philip Lake, Jamie Hall, Kane Lasky, Vaskilan, Trengrad, Unhola out of this race. And he knows that there will be drivers out of this race potentially still later on. And even though he's sliding wide in every single corner, he is having a nightmare of a time making it around there on the track. He's doing it cleanly, he's not getting into anyone's ways. And he knows that once there is a car in the wall from ahead of him, he will gain her position. And he has a real chance, if this race continues as it does, to even get close to top 10, despite the fact that he is a lap down and his car is a broken mess. So that's incredible, but that is what you do here. You just try to survive, and that is how you gain iRating also, for those not familiar with it. In fact, you can make it to four or 5,000 iRating just by finishing races. You don't need to be fast. Absolutely. and. Uh... He's got to hope, though, that he doesn't run through the incident limit, because if he keeps having those offs, he could find himself in trouble. As we're back to the top three now on screen, and we're down to eight laps to go. Marrera currently your leader, Frisha second, and Bycroft running third. They've continued to pull away from fourth behind them. Nikola Kochi still leading Olenek. Nikola's hopes of a podium starting to slip away further and further here at his home track. Uh, unless these top three tangle, which is not unheard of if once we get to the final lap. Look at Nuno charging. He did a couple of laps ago, he did a 130.1, which I believe is the fastest lap of the race. Has to be, really. And at Lesmo, too, he is getting really wide. He got on the grass going into the corner, and then he messed up the exit of the corner. And again, at Ascari, he is really, really sideways. Now, the problem for him is that once you get to the later end of the race, you will not only have a little bit worn out tires, which is not too big of an issue with this car, because these tires will last forever, but practically forever anyway. Um, but he will also have a lighter car. The car will be even higher up as it is early on. Means that you have less downforce created by the ground effect, and you have a car that is looser, is more agile, and it means that you will have a lot more trouble. Now, you can adjust that by adjusting the anti-roll bars as well as the brake balance, but you can't adjust, you can't fix it forever. There is only so much you can do. And I think Cherno, being the wily old fox that he is, the Austrian driver, will have picked that up and is right now just basically licking his chops, knowing that he will have his prey and he is the predator and it will be a feast at Italy. Yeah, you talked about uh, it being rare that Gernot makes a mistake, but it seemed like uh, he outbraked himself a little bit in the parabolic as we rode on board with Nuno, who nearly got into his gearbox, so maybe go get yourself a scratch ticket there. <laughs> uh, something small, as it currently didn't hurt him too bad, he just used the draft to pull right back up. 
Uh, now, let's give a quick update on what's going on with our championship. Loma is in six. Again, that's still not a good enough position. Woods actually improved a bit. I think uh, with the loss of Phil Lake and Jamie Hall, that's got him two spots. He's up to eighth. Again, still doesn't really matter a whole lot because his drop points will come into effect. But I guess a little bit of pride, at least, that he won't finish too far down. Yeah, it is pride. And you also want to do as well as you can in every single race. It's about... Well, you, you're not going into the race to lose. I think Joni Heikkinen, who is the 2017 Finnish champion rallycross driver, said it best yesterday when I was interviewing him. He said that if I was, wasn't driving for the win, I wouldn't be doing it anymore. So you want to win each and every time you go out there, and even though at the race you may not be in a winning position, you want to do as well as you can, and he will be happy about every single position. Now, as for Alexi, Right now, he is probably frustrated and he is probably cursing himself and he is luck early on in this race. And also, his lack of uh, performance in qualifying. But Monza is one of those tracks where you can really see surprises in qualifying. I know a lot of fast drivers who have never done a good qualifying at Monza. It's just so difficult to get the car set up right. And if you have the philosophy, as Alexei Loma does, of using a little bit more downforce and uh, focusing on cornering instead of top speed with this car, then, you know, you will have trouble here at Monza. He's trying his best. He's catching Rob every now and then. But even that fifth place, even the fifth place is not going to be uh, good enough for Alexei Loma. He will need more and he will just have to hope and pray that some miracle will land on his lap in his last five laps. Maybe it's a leader battle, maybe it's an absolutely amazing battle in the lead, maybe it's someone making a mistake in front of him. But right now, it's no longer in Alex's own hands. Now, I, I don't know if there's a, a grapevine over in Finland, uh, but usually we don't always get the news of what keeps drivers away. Aloma oh. missed those three rounds. Oh, go ahead. No, nothing, nothing important. I was saying we don't have, we have grapevine, but we say uh, straight from the post office of the horseman coming ah, from the wall. <laughs> okay. As we got another swap for the lead, uh, Frisha going by Morera once again, and so now he is your new leader. But uh, yeah, did you hear what uh, what kept Alomo away? Because I feel like if he would have shown up at least one or two of those races, he might have had a better chance at this championship. He slept in. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, the helicopter didn't get a landing permission. Okay, okay, uh, yes, clearly, clearly. <laughs> well, again, the uniqueness of sim racing that uh, you don't always get in real racing. Wow, getting close to the back of Frisha, Nuna Marrero coming through the Lesmos and losing a bit on the exit there, but I uh, wonder if he's getting a little bit antsy now that we're down to five below, or uh, down to, to five laps to go, rather. And it sounds like we got a little bit of a battle for 12th as well. Laughter and Konecki. Oh, yeah. Here is Peter Konecki. Uh, having caught up a little bit to Ben Laughter. Laughter right now on the left side. And it will be easy for Peter going into turn number one. And I don't think Ben will fight that out too much. Ben is an excellent driver. He's absolutely a driver belonging to the top split. But he's not one of those aggressive drivers. He's someone who is trying to make good positions by being really calm and really consistent. He's in a lot of ways, he's much like uh, Steve Bycroft and much like Matt Wood also used to be. Now, Matt Wood has taken a level in uh, bad battery later, and Matt Wood has become one of the top drivers all of a sudden. But for a long time, he was the consistent force in this series. And you see some of the drivers who are not there to battle entirely, as we have also a good proper battle for the lead right now with uh, Cherno and Nuno. In the screen, it was awful close between Laughter and Konezki, almost touching through the first Lesmo, but thankfully did not make contact. Meanwhile, we jump back up to the front with Nuno taking a poke up to the first Lesmo himself, but nothing doing there. I've also seen a little bit of blanking on my screen from uh, from Bycroft. Hopefully that doesn't cause problems once we do start fighting here at the end. Next time we cross the line, it's going to be three to go. If you're in Bycroft's shoes, do you wait all the way for the final lap uh, here, Ossian? Or do you try yeah. and go on two laps to go? It's a fool's errand right now to try and force them move on one of them, split them up, and then put yourself in a position where Nuno is. Because you see Nuno in front, he's in attack mode. Cherno will have to be in defense mode. Now, Steve, 
will have to be as quiet as possible and hope that they will not pay attention to him. Of course they know he's there, you have to know he's there, but Nuno will be focused on attacking. And then you will have to check position where in the last laps you will no longer be holding down the risks. You will try to battle for each and every corner, for each and every time. So he will hope he can get a three-wide situation and pass them both at the same goal. And here we go again. Let's see if Steve goes in turn. No, he will not. He's not that, not that dumb. But he will be trying to get a pass on Cherno. Run the outside oh. and Nuno gets loose. They both have to slow up and Bycroft sees an opportunity. He goes by, but can he manage to hold this off? Oh, and Morera outbreaks himself. This could be the gap that Bycroft needs. He starts to pull away as Morera gets a slowdown penalty and Jernot Farisha is going to have to try and regain that time. Let's watch the replay. It, was this the... Was this the wake of the car causing this? What happened here? Oh, it's very interesting. It's very interesting of a situation. I will have to take another look. So Nuno went down to the inside and he didn't want to lift, but he got loose. He got loose, he got loose, he was trying to save it, then he got to the grass. Now, Cherno did the smart thing, he was lifting. And then Nuno, who had been just loose times before, he will have cooked up his tires, he will have hot tire temps on the surface, he just cannot get the grip down at the inside, and that means he just threw away his chances, most likely, of winning this race. Now it's between Steve Bycroft and Cherno Frisch, and if you are Steve Bycroft in that number three car, and it's two laps to go, and it's at Monza, the Fossi are cheering, absolutely standing, that is the last guy you will have on your you will want on your mirrors. That is absolutely sweating bullet situation for, for Steve. But I'm rooting for him. I mean, I want Steve Bycroft to take it home, but it's not going to be easy. Yeah, everybody loves an underdog. And already, Gerna is closed back up to the back of him. So this is going to be even tougher for him to try and take this one home. You can see in the top left of your screen, two to go. Don't really have time for it with the battle on screen, but uh, Kinezki and Laughter came together a couple laps ago into De La Rosa. Both are able to continue, uh, but there was indeed contact this time between the two. We ride on board now with the Austrian, watching to see what he does. Up ahead, uh, Morera losing ground could mean that Kochi closes in on him. He's about two seconds behind, so there is an off chance there. And Aloma could catch Olenek, so a lot of battles happening out here. It suddenly all erupts. And we're going to get, a, well, in America, we call it the white flag. I know you don't have that uh, necessarily over we have in, in France. Europe. In France? <laughs> okay, I got you. As uh, uh, coming up to the parabolic of Steve Bycroft has only one to go. And Gernot Frisha could be spying another victory and deny Steve Bycroft a lone win this season. Yeah, Cherno will have comfort in the fact that uh, Steve was b barely able to keep up even in a two-car draft, so he knows that he will be faster in draft. Let's see if he make a, makes a move here right now, run the outside. Yes, he does. Will Steve defend? He tries to defend, and though oh! it's going to be the inside here, both of them slipping up. Bycroft barely no! catching the car. Freesha gets ahead. It's not over yet, though. Could he manage to pull something? Could he get himself a run? He's staying right with him, a little bit hot through the second part of the De La Rosa chicane, but he stays with it. He's still three tenths behind, coming through the first Lesmo. Once again, losing ground as Frisha looks incredibly strong. Through the second Lesmo, this time it's Gerda's time to make a mistake, but they both slide a little bit wide. Steve Bycroft slow off the corner. Has he lost his only chance? He's still got one chicane okay. left in the form of Ascari. He could manage to get a good run off of there as they break into the corner this time down through the first apex both looking smooth Frisha still holding the cards in his hands as come they on, come Stan. off the corner yeah I don't think he's got it they come up to Parabolica at this point not a lot of breaking in hand for Bycroft Ger uh, Gernot Frisha all he has to do is be smooth around the corner here Steve Bycroft looks like he is going to be winless this season and Gernot Frisha takes another victory here at oh, the final Rob. rounds. Eloma and Rob as well. Sorry to break into it, but Alex, Eloma and Rob Oleniak side by side going into the last corner. Eloma getting very loose on the outside. Rob Oleniak done to the inside. And Eloma, will, it will be a drag race up to the line. And it will be an absolute photo finish. I think Rob takes it.
He, I think Rob took that he one. He did. Oh, man. It was less than a tenth between them. As we come down uh, to uh, Peter Mikus in this battle, this is for eighth position between himself and Suarez. They're coming up to the parabolic. I don't think Suarez has got this one, though, as the number 11 is wide off the corner, trying to carry as much speed as he can. Even though a little bit of run goes to Suarez, it is not enough. Nice eighth place uh, there to Mikus. Excuse me, ninth ben place, rather. Yeah, and Ben and Peter are still quite close to each other. Those two have come together earlier on. Uh, Ben's car looks a little bit better. Uh, Peter is a little bit damaged. But I think uh, Peter will take it away, even though Ben is quite close, but he's a little bit too far. Ooh, maybe not. Uh, you can see just how much damage is on the wings of Peter. If he gets a decent exit, there's just not much of a run down the line here, and Ben Laughter indeed is a little too far back. That's going to be the last of our cars on the lead lap, and that's going to take us to a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll come back with the official results as well as driver interviews. Stick around because you'll see all the upcoming races here on the GSRC.
Welcome back to Monza. We just watched the season finale here for the Lotus 79 Classic Teams Championship and the Sunday Grand Prix Series. Gernot Frisha wound up with the victory just ahead of Steve Bycroft with some clever driving. Steve nearly stole it away. He took advantage when uh, the, the opportunity showed itself, but it just was not meant to be. Still a second place, earns him some decent points, and Nuno Marrera takes the final step on the podium. A big mistake from him was costly there with the final few laps. Still third is not bad. Nick Lacochi at his home track, well, he'll have to settle for fourth. Rob Olenek, very close fight to the line. He gets a top five and beats out Alexia Loma. We're still trying to figure out the points because it turns out there are actually four drop weeks. We'll try and keep you updated on who actually took the victory in the championship. Kendrick Taylor uh, finished seventh with Matt Wood, our other championship rival, starting on pole and finishing in eighth. Peter Mikus took ninth today and Pablo Suarez rounds out the top ten and is our hard charger today. He is, he is, and it will be interesting to see the not only the tail end of the championship, but it was also a very interesting race in a lot of fashions. You see Pablo being the hard charger, you saw an amazing two-way, later three-way lead battle. You had Cherno and Nuno battling it out all throughout the race. You had Steve Wycroft catching them both, pants down with two laps to go, and then Cherno taking it back. You had the storyline of the championship with Alexi Eloma being nigh unbeatable on some circuits at some points in this race and M Matt Wood trying to hold on to it and both of them having a very difficult race. You had the drama, you had the accidents and you had the amazing fights and can I just say, Monza, you never disappoint me. You never disappoint me certainly gave us a thrill today. We've got our winner ready to talk to us, uh, Gernot Frisha, who joins us in the booth. And what a wild last few laps that was, Gernot. Uh, it looked like you had a big scare there with Nuno coming through Curva Granda. Tell us what that was like from your perspective. Yeah, hi, guys. Hi, Ostian. It's very nice to see you here. Uh, yeah, it was a, absolutely a, a crazy race. Uh, I, I don't know how I avoided Nuno because uh, I didn't expect him to to slide that much and uh, almost hit his rear, and then it would have uh, all been over. But in, in the end, it yeah it was a lucky finish for me. It seems. Well, obviously you uh, weren't there for the uh, championship hunt necessarily, but uh, it looked like it was a lot of fun out there today at, at Monza, at the very least. A lot of swapping back and forth. When you two saw Steve Bycroft start to catch up, did you? was there kind of an, oh, no, not this moment for you? <laughs> of course. Uh, he's always there in every single race. And, uh, yeah, he never does uh, crazy things, so it keeps him a little bit more relaxed. Uh, on the other hand, he's just waiting for his chance, and he got his chance, so it was a, a, a very close finish in the end. Well, this uh, encapsulates uh, yet another season, and uh, coming up next, uh, we've got uh, a little bit of a break, and then uh, another season starting 2020 here in December. Are you looking forward to try and compete for the championship again, or are you going to take a, another little break here and just kind of do it casually like you did this season? No, I think uh, I will be back for the next season right from the beginning. Um, yeah. Last season was, was something different and I didn't expect much before the season. Uh, actually, I wasn't even sure I, I could finish it. And uh, in, the, in the end, it turned out to, to yeah, be a very good, good season. Although uh, I still don't know how, how things ended up because everything was so close this season. Yeah, we're we're still crunching the numbers ourselves. But again, congratulations on another victory and can't wait to see you back. Thanks, guys, and yeah, also thanks for fantastic uh, coverage uh, for the whole season. Uh, it's al always very good. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you for the kind words. That was our winner, winner Gernot Frisha. Up next, Ossian has caught up with Nuno Marrera, third place out there today, who was also involved in that incident uh, with two to go. Yes. Hello, Nuno, and congratulations for the podium finish. Now, normally, it would be a good result for you. But of course, we both know you are a fighter, you are an absolute champion, and it's a shame to see the fight end that way. First of all, let's go to that incident between 
you and Cherno. There was no contact, but you got a little bit wide. Talk us through what happened. Hey, Ocean, how are you? Uh, glad to hear from you. Uh, well, I think it was like, I don't know, maybe it was a slight uh, change of the wind because every time we were doing the same at Curva Grande and that in that lap, I heard Gerdo also had uh, difficulties there, but I was feeling my car being pushed left, left, and uh, I was braking, accelerating, uh, trying to control it, and it was really hard, and then I could not, uh, uh, like, brake uh, uh, in time, so I lost it there, but, well, I cannot complain. I, I had a great, great, one of the greatest uh, races here at Monza, definitely, and I think it was, like, worth the... Um, it was really enjoying. So yeah, not not winning, of course, but uh, well, with these guys, with Steve and Gerno in, in ahead of me, I what's there to complain? So congratulations to them. So <laughs> yeah, you looked like you had fun there, and it's great to see you and Cherno and Steve battle it out. I was absolutely enjoying watching it. It brought back some good memories, you know. But uh, earlier on in the race, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> earlier. Earlier on in the race, you had battle with Cherno and Steve hadn't caught up to you yet. Now, I want to talk about the fact that early on, were you trying to get away from Steve and the others along with Cherno, swapping places, or was it a straight fight right from the start? Yeah, it was. It was a straight fight right from the start. At, at a point, I thought about uh, trying to bring uh, Steve uh, to the to the fight so I could have more chances again because I know I, I had only one chance, which would be be behind in the last lap and pass no ahead of the last lap. So this was the tactic. I, I had it figured it out, and I, all the rest was just fireworks. <laughs> I had first, second, no problem. Just the one thing that I had to do is to be second place uh, ahead of the the last uh, turn uh, lap. But unfortunately, that that thing at Curva Grande avoided it. But Going back to your question, yes, I thought about doing that, pushing Steve to the fray, but then I thought that that's not like uh, very, very polite from me. So yes, I was giving it all, all I could. Ah, oh, that's that's fantastic. That's fantastic to hear, and it's a very clever tactic because uh, Cherno, we know he's very difficult to beat one on one. <laughs> so, so no, no. You had a couple of races this season. You were there for most of the season, but not all of it. Once the season turns to 2020, we will start the next season. Uh, will we see Nuno Moreira fighting it out with the best in this series right from the get-go? Will you drive a full season? Yeah, I will try. Definitely, I will try to race at Sunday. It's, it's winter, it's uh, it's rainy, <laughs> so I have a bit of an excuse to say uh, stay at home at Sunday. So yes, I, I will try to do that because it's like... I don't know, this is so fun. <laughs> How can we miss this? <laughs> ah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's it's great. Uh, so, well, no, no. Thank you very much for the interview. Th congratulations for the podium. Congratulations for that wonderful fight. We racing drivers know that uh, a good fight is sometimes worth more than a good finishing position. So uh, if there's anything you'd like to add, anything you'd like to say, go ahead. Ladies and no. gentlemen, Nuno Moreira. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ocean. And just just uh, happy to, to be talking to you again and to the guys there at uh, GS, GSRC. And congratulations and see us on next season. Bye-bye. Well, there we heard from uh, Nuno Moreira. And I believe Joe Peak has caught up next with the hometown hero himself. Nicola Kochi joins us, but sadly not on the podium. Nicola, congratulations on a fourth place. You were one of the few drivers out there, I think, who had a, what looked like something of a calm race. Uh, yeah. Hi, guys. Um, I don't know if it was like on uh, 100%, but uh, like, sure, the, the second half, it was pretty, pretty lonely, but I have to fight hard against Rob to, you know, to keep the spot and uh, try to uh, don't, don't let the the guy in front to escape but uh, you know when you you defend yourself you're going to to hit badly your pace anyway so um i i, I it seems that i was pretty close uh, with the pace of the faster guy but they would just like uh, three three seconds to too much uh, late and i couldn't uh, use the draft and that was it but uh, yeah, pretty pretty happy to to be around uh, at their pace anyway. Uh, 
when you have those situations, especially once you start to pull away from Rob, what do you do to try and keep yourself focused uh, and keep from uh, making errors when there's nobody to fight with out there? Do you have any particular method? Uh, yeah, but I fail every time, so I will not <laughs> tell you. Uh, so uh, honestly, I just like go with the flow. Sometimes I just uh, think about what I have to do the next day on the, on my office and stuff like that. But it seems almost like there is some kind of area that goes with the automatic pil piloting <laughs> somehow. But uh, yeah, it's not it's not easy to 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 keep the focus for sure. Well. You weren't in the championship hunt this season, but at times we've seen, like here, you have some pretty decent pace with things uh, getting reset for next season. What do you? What's your goal uh, coming into 2020? What, what sort of position are you looking to finish in in the points? Yeah, well, this season was a little bit strange for me because... Um, I, you know, I added an another job to my main one, so my, uh, you know, my time for practice is uh, like a lot less now, and uh, I was able still to to get some practice and to be uh, good enough, uh, consistent enough to to be, you know, in in the races, but. Uh, I, I'm sure that uh, this is wasn't this wasn't my you know my my, my real speed. Uh, anyway, so um, I don't know if the next season uh, things is going to, to change and if I have enough time to to do my practice routine uh, as usual. I will be I will looking forward for sure. But uh, honestly, I think that it's going to be pretty similar to to this season uh, anyway. So I will be there on top five sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, uh, a little bit uh, slower. Sometimes I will miss races and stuff like that. But you know, I, I, need, I need a miracle, <laughs> so step substantially. Well, uh, obviously, sometimes uh, it takes that in racing to find yourself in championships and wins. But you never know. Again, congratulations on a fourth place, Nicola. We'll look forward to talking to you some more next season. Thank you, guys. Uh, let me say hi to Ocean, that it was uh, a little bit of uh, a long time that I didn't uh, he hear the, his voice. And I, I'm, I'm happy that he's back doing uh, this kind of stuff that is very competent and it's uh, crazy fast when he's behind the wheel anyway. So thanks. Thanks, you guys, for the, for the coverage. And uh, uh, let's see. Let, let's meet uh, together next season. Bye. Fantastic. That was uh, Nicola Kochi fourth place. And uh, I was glad to have Ossian up here in the booth because uh, great to have someone uh, so knowledgeable about the car, uh, especially so fast in the car out here. But we got to close up. So let's give a few thank yous uh, uh, before we go. Big thanks to the companies, of course, uh, that provide the software and the hardware for our broadcast. You can see them listed here on your screen. And additional thanks go to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. Thank Thanks to the team today, Ossian, Amjad, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at globalsimracingchannel.com. We're also on social media, where hopefully we'll try and get the, the points posted there and give you a confirmation of who the champion was. We're still getting those numbers together. Uh, but you can check us on Twitter. That'll be at GSR channel, Facebook, Global Sim Racing channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. If you'd like to support the channel, check out our merchandise store. That is gsrc.storeenvy.com, or we got a link below in the description. Don't forget to head on over to our YouTube page and click the big red subscribe button as well so that you don't miss a moment here on GSRC. First round, we'll be back for Lotus 79 on December 15th, but we have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen. So check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard. We'll see you on the track. <laughs>